Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Dear students, Assalamu alaikum to all of you. I hope that you all are fine, happy, and fresh. This is your science teacher, Muhammad Mashud Khan, and we are studying chapter number 7 that is, forces and their effects. In this video, we will study about force, its unit, and how the force is measured, and we will learn about the things that why some of the things float and some of the things sink so we will study all this in this lecture but before we start today's lecture I will just recall the previous knowledge first what we have studied so far is about force contact forces gravitational fo pull tension compression and bending this is what we have studied so far so now I will just recall all of these uh, one by one so we discussed about force that force is basically a push or a pull and force is the agent which can change the direction of a moving object or it can if an object is at rest force is the agent that can move that object or if an object is moving so force is an agent that can stop that object then we discussed about that contact forces we said that contact forces are the one when two objects are literally touching each other and for this we took the example of a kid that who is sitting on a cycle and the other one is just pushing it so you see that in that case the kid who is pushing the bicycle his hand is in contact with the cycle so when two objects are touching each other and the force is there we call it as the contact force the other force that we are going to discuss is the the force that is like when two objects are not in contact they are far away from each other but still the force is existing that force is uh, we can take the example of a gravitational pull of the earth that uh, earth pulls the moon towards itself and because of that the moon is in the orbit so the next is the tension what is tension tension is just nothing but a stretch produced in an object uh, that is called tension uh, compression is opposite to the tension like in tension the it might happen that the length of the object might get increased but in compression the length can be shortened up it is just opposite to the tension and bending is the curvature produced because of the load or because of the force so this is uh, we have already explained all this in detail so I have just uh, recalled all these things uh, in a very brief with brief explanation now we will move towards the today's lecture and we will start we will take start from the force that we have already discussed that force is basically push or a pull uh, or even a twist that is called a force and you can see different uh, images also uh, but uh, we did not discuss about that uh, how the force can be measured so we say that uh, for measuring force force can be measured by a force meter and uh, this has a spring inside and the larger the force the more the spring stretches and the further the pointer moves down the scale so you can see the image of the uh, force meter it is just nothing but a spring and uh, outside that spring it is there is a reading written and you can see there is a red pointer when we will attach some load here we will attach some mass here so it will bring that spring down so if the load is heavier if the mass is heavier one so it will stretch the spring more greater the force greater the mass greater will be the stretch and the reading will be greater which means that great force is applied from the downward direction so this is called the force meter you can see there is a, a load attached to it it is 1 kg and uh, that is the, the mass which is attached and the spring is stretched completely if so if it was less than 1 kg then it might have been uh, not stretched fully so and well it is uh, stretched completely or even it if if it is stretched half the outside reading shows gives us the reading that how heavier the object is or or in other way in other words we can say that uh, what is the force exerted on that spring so this is something about the measuring of force with a force meter uh, the unit of force is uh, the Newton and this is because of the name of Sir Isaac Newton the great physics uh, scientist 
and uh, the unit of force is a newton we already have discussed and the, the and the instrument that is used to measure the force is uh, force meter or we call it as a newton meter here is another way to explain this uh, force meter uh, when you hang an object on a force meter the spring stretches and the pointer indicates the weight of the object on the scale nowadays uh, the technology is uh, very much uh, in play so uh, this force meter we have digital force meters also nowadays uh, which can just give you the digital reading so instead of uh, this uh, spring uh, the older one the older version of the force meter we can just use the uh, new one the new version of this force meter that is the digital force meter which can give you the more precise and accurate value of the force that is exerted on it the next thing the main important thing that we are going to discuss is that why do things float so it says that objects with tightly packed molecules are more dense than those where the molecules are spread out when an object floats it pushes water out of the way displacement to understand this that why objects float and some of the objects sink there is a common question that why a needle sinks while the huge big ships they float so to understand this uh, we have to understand few things that first of all when an object is put into the water it exerts some force that is acting downward so there is a reactionary force given by the water whose direction is upward that force is called the upthrust force so in easier words if the downward force is greater than the upthrust force then in that case the object will sink otherwise it will float we can understand this example of sinking and floating by another way for example we have to take an object which we are going to dip in the water so we measure the volume of that object and we take the same amount of volume of water also so we have to then check out the weight of the object and the weight of the water if the weight of the object is greater than the weight of the water of the same volume then in that case the object is going to sink or if the weight of the object is less than the weight of the water then it's going to float so in case we take the when we take the example of the needle and the ship so it means that the amount of water displaced by the needle with respect to its volume is greater than as compared to the ship because ship displaces a large amount of water and the same time its weight is less than the weight of the displaced water so that keeps the uh, that ship floating now the next thing that we are going to discuss is the upthrust force that is related to this uh, sinking and floating so upthrust force is called is basically the upward push provided by the water to any object that is inserted in the water so when the weight when we keep or insert any object in the water its weight is acting downward so at the same time when the weight is acting downward or the force is acting downward the upward push is provided by the water also so that upward push that is provided by the water is called the upthrust force you can just witness that up upthrust force uh, if you jump in the swimming pool from some height so you will feel that like someone has slapped your body so that feeling or that sensation is just because of the upthrust force that is provided by the water or exerted by the water to your body so that upward force is called the upthrust force that keeps the object floating so i hope that you have understood this all 